and I'm sorry that the time was so tight this morning. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get your running shoes on again. Um, we're going to go to some parallel sessions, and this time, miraculously, we have not confused blue with green and green with blue. We've got it right today. What I would like to ask is those people, when you look at your name badge, so time to get your name badges out again. Have a look at your name badges. And this time we're not looking at the squares, we're looking at the dots, the little circles. If you have a green circle, like the gentleman there, I can just see, he's got a green circle. If you have a green circle on your badge, can you please stand up and who are you following? Martin. And we need to go quick, quick, as fast as you can. And please, if you do have a green circle, please do go. I know some, yesterday some people decided, oh no, the other session looks more interesting and we'll swap. But if you do have a green circle, please do go to that group. Otherwise, we've got the numbers and the translation and everything else incorrect. No, I've not convinced the lady there. She's got a green circle and she doesn't want to move. <laughs> Would you mind, terribly? Okay. Then, if you have a blue circle on your badge, could you please stand up? And Karin? Where is Karin? She's there. And she's even wearing a sort of blues-purple blouse, so we're colour-coordinated. If you could follow Karin, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. And while the blue and green groups are moving away, may I ask the red presenters to come up on stage, wherever you are. Good morning. And now, the reds. Perhaps you would care to move a little bit more towards the stage <laughs> because we don't seem to have that many people left gentlemen in the gentlemen in the far corners yes the man with the beard and the computer would you care to move in a little bit that would be nice i don't know over there you look very comfortable but perhaps may i invite you a little bit further forward <laughs> So we're going to have two sessions today. Are you starting off on agriculture? Okay, we're starting off on agriculture, forestry and fisheries, and then we're moving to manufacturing of textile, apparel, leather footwear, and other related products. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this next session will be conducted in French. If you require uh, interpretation into French, please grab those headsets. We need some over there. Voilà, maintenant on parle en français. So now we have switched switch to French. Anyone needing heads, a headset, please, please go ahead and get one. And I th can you hear the English translation? You can hear the English translation? I'm not quite sure how that numbering works. Voilà, monsieur. So, gentlemen, you have the floor.
Bonjour à tous. Good morning. Good morning to all. So I will give you the presentation of the agriculture group, reference group. I thought I was very popular and everybody was coming to hear me, but I think now we are in smaller numbers. But uh, nevertheless, you're all interested, and I'm sure we'll have a good discussion, an in-depth discussion, and that we will deal with all the difficult topics. I'm Eric Dressin, and I represent the chair and vice chair of uh, the reference group for agriculture. Just a question, how much time have I got? You have seven minutes remaining. So, as I said, I represent the Agriculture Reference Group, and uh, uh, Trina, the chair, couldn't be here because she had other work commitments. So, the ESCO uh, program is uh, a very good tool for our sector because our sector uh, has various activities with subsectors. We have agriculture, aquaculture, and forestry. So we are really diversified in our activities, and uh, there are lots of activities which require different training. We also notice that our sector, like others, needs more skilled workers. In fact, uh, the reality is that you don't milk a cow in the same way today as you did 50 years ago. Tractors also have evolved. They are now real technology machines as opposed to before. So all that requires particular skills. This also applies to vets who have to have proper training. Then we had, uh, as I said, more technology. And we also have high mobility, geographical mobility in our sector, not only for unskilled workers, but also we have people who are going to work abroad. For example, in forestry, many companies are active in several countries at any one time. Also, people who work in the wine industry, well, it's very common for these people to train in France, then to go and work in Bordeaux, then maybe spend a few years in Australia before they come back to Europe. So this is all uh, proper to our sector. And uh, it's because of that reality that the social partners at European level have started several initiatives in order to uh, answer to find an answer to the needs of the sector agripass is a project that we implement but also in our sector for example i also work with the service industry to agriculture well we provide training courses at international level for the various people who are active in our sector so as Catherine was already saying this morning, our first meeting was in March 2012. So we were on the first working reference groups to uh, get uh, working. So we're sort of the guinea pig in ESCO. Together with my colleague, We, the two of us are guinea pigs. And uh, this has uh, meant that we've had to develop our methodology because we only had the sort of the very basic methodology to start, but uh, we, we had to decide whether we're going to use panels, we're going to use experts, whether we're going to work together with the maintenance group. All these things had to be decided as we were going along. Then the organization of our work, that was difficult at the beginning. We didn't know what to do. We didn't have the proper computer tools. And I must thank the Secretariat of ESCO because they did everything they could to 
help us get off the ground. We started with meetings that lasted one day, then we moved on to a day and a half because we felt it was better to meet for a longer time. We didn't have the guidelines. So really, we had to start from scratch for everything. Then we had another problem. The problem was to see how we could uh, work with other reference groups. We, as I said, in our sector, there are various activities. We first of all have agriculture, forestry, fishery, and we also have uh, specific uh, activities for specific areas. For example, you don't have olive trees in Finland, and the livestock is not the same in the di different countries. So in other words, we had to really see whether there were any activities that were overlapping with other uh, reference groups. And for example, uh, for blacksmiths, uh, for landscape architects, we had to decide whether that was part of our work or whether we should leave that to other reference groups. And if so, in what way should we do that? Then we also had to look at uh, overlaps that were obvious. And uh, we had to find uh, the proper method to deal with these, to see how we could coordinate our work with the work of other reference groups. And of course, we always inclined to take over something, to give a definition for an occupation, uh, for a sector, but we are not always the best place people to do it. And as far as our work is concerned, I can conclude by saying that uh, we really, really are grateful to the coordination work that was done in Brussels because that made it possible for us to really move along in the various phases of our work. And I also want to underline uh, our difficulty, which will also be the difficulty for other groups. Uh, we are working on a voluntary basis. We are not paid for what we do, so all that uh, is additional work for the experts in the different uh, groups. But uh, now the secretariat will be able to identify the right experts, experts who has the right knowledge and who has also the time to be available. So where did we get to today if we If we remind ourselves of what Catherine said, she had five activities uh, to present. We have uh, more or less uh, finished the sectorial breakdown, the list of the occupation. We are now reviewing all the things we have compiled already. We've also compiled a list of sources. That's quite a complete list. And uh, we are now uh, coming up with uh, uh, definitions, pretty well precise uh, definitions for the various uh, occupations and skills. Now, on the screen, you see on the left, you see everything to do with agriculture, aquaculture, and uh, forestry. And then you find the subcategories. In fact, that list is very long. And we, we sort of got uh, sort of to five levels of definitions. But we're always working on a basis of consensus, which means that we have to work uh, at a slower pace than if we could just go by majority votes. Now, what is still to be done? Well, first of all, we have the, the terms and non-preferential terms, definition of core skills, then optional skills for each occupation for the sector as well. And then on the other pillar, the qualification pillar, we have to come up with the same list. And then also we have to make the link between the three uh, pillars. In October, we decided together with ESCO that uh, our deadline uh, would uh, be uh, so we agreed on a deadline of June, July 2014. 
and that should allow the Secretariat to complete all the um, supervision work that still has to be done and also look after the translation. So we have a very, very tight uh, calendar for the next few months. My last slide shows you the challenges for Catherine and for other people working on the project. Translation. Translation is going to be an important uh, work to be done because at the moment everything exists only in English and if we want uh, to avoid some problems, for example, how are we going to describe the captain of a fishing boat? Well, it's going to be different in different countries, so we have to agree on a translation. And the group agrees that we should create synergies with existing tools, with existing instruments uh, to make sure that the end user can make the best possible use of the system. And we have to obviously work in synergy with national initiatives. We already have uh, some uh, national associations and groups that exist, so we have to work with them. And uh, then we have to think about maintaining the system, reviewing the system. How can we revise the system over the coming years? Well, that is something that ESCO will have to decide. Thank you very much. Voilà. Il nous reste... So, we have a few minutes left for questions, is there anything you would like some more explanation on? I was very impressed that you're all doing this uh, on a voluntary basis. Uh, do you have any specific questions? Um. I would be really interested to know um, when you uh, decided for the methodology. Sorry, I'm not talking into the mic. Um, why did you start from economic sectors as a base instead of occupations? Because it seems to me, I mean, we did this work in Croatia and we saw that there is a large distribution of occupation across many different economic sectors. And since we are uh, looking for the structure of demand for certain skills. Then it seemed to make sense to us that we didn't start with economic sectors because we have demand from other sectors as well for the same occupations. And we do want to know how, let's say, a bricklayer will be functioning in the construction industry, but also they exist in other economic sectors like trade, for example. And since our focus is on skills, then it does make sense to understand how the skills are applied in very different sectors, which you may not get if you focus on the economic sector as the basic block of analysis. So if you could explain how you started from that. Eric, c'est à vous. Eric? I'm answering the question in French. So that the interpreters have something to do, and I spare you my poor English. Well, the choice of using an economic sector, in fact, Catherine should really answer that question. It's part of the ESCO strategy. That's the way we started working. And uh, we, as experts, adopted this way of doing things uh, when we started up this reference group. But as you say, there are some overlaps with respect to skills and competencies, and there are specific uh, steps to be taken to cover the various uh, sectors, because the same occupation can actually fall into different sectors. And in order to remedy uh, this situation, we'll have to find a solution, obviously, for these overlaps. But maybe Catherine can give some more uh, details. But très, très, très vite, Catherine. So, Catherine, very briefly, please. 
because otherwise we won't have enough time for the next speaker. I didn't highlight it in my presentation adequately enough, but we have labor market reality. To be able to organize everything well, we split it up in 27 pieces of puzzles. And that's what are these groups of economic sectors. So here we have agriculture, forestry, fishery together. One of the important reasons is to clearly identify the scope of each reference group so not they don't have overlapping in work, so that we don't have landscaping being treated in five separate reference groups. Because then we get an output and we have to filter out everything that has been done double. What is, however, important, that that's what you stress, is to create these synergies. So we will have landscaping information provided by this reference group, but also by another one. What is crucial there is that we highlight on the skills that they share, so that we can enable this occupational mobility through ESCO. And that is one of the key elements reference groups look at, in fact. So it's not the basis of their organization, but it's one of their main focuses. Thank you very much. And Eric, merci beaucoup. Ladies and gentlemen, we now invite Gustavo on stage, a uh, very important man. Without the work of his groups, we would probably not be wearing our clothes or the shoes that we have on. So Gustavo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, indeed, uh, um, it's a very important sector. It is, uh, as Eric was saying, um, a sector that has been also chosen to be a, a kind of guinea pig, a kind of, uh, of sector on which to, to try out a number of things. Eric comes, uh, uh, was uh, the guinea pig for the agricultural sector and the textile, clothing, leather, footwear related uh, activities were the guinea pigs for the industrial sector. And it's very important that we, that we um, do achieve a good output so that uh, it could serve as a model also for the other industrial sectors. I don't know how, yes, okay, fine. Well, let's start with the, what is the sector that we cover, what is our, our coverage, and uh, um, very briefly, the EU textile and leather sectors, because it is uh, a, a number of sectors, is uh, an economic activity that covers uh, 230,000 businesses across Europe. They are mostly SMEs. A lot of jobs, 2.5 million direct jobs, and that does not, of course, does not include all the indirect uh, jobs that it, uh, it generates. Um, as such, they are, on, they are already 7% of jobs in, in EU manufacturing and uh, uh, producing 4% of the total EU production value. So it is a really important sector for the European economy with a turnover uh, of more than 210 billion euros a year. Um, I must also emphasize that in this uh, uh, turn of the, the export uh, performance of, the, of these industries is very, very important. And uh, in certain subsectors of the EU textile and leather um, uh, sectors, we do have uh, uh, industries that are actually um, adding earnings, export earnings to the EU trade balance. And that is very important today because, as you see, it is an industry that is, uh, has undergone um, a very important uh, um, hit by the financial crisis, uh, but it is a sector that is quite resilient, that is picking up after uh, the, the, in the aftermath of the crisis and is trying to improve. So it is, although it is a traditional sector, it is absolutely not an obsolete sector. It is a sector that is investing in education, and it is investing in uh, technology and innovation because uh, uh, it is not, as uh, also in the agricultural industry, in the agriculture, um, uh, jobs are not anymore what they were. Uh, the industry is not anymore what it, is, it, it, what it was. And uh, actually, we, we are very modern, very innovative. The fashion sectors are probably one of the most innovative sectors of the European economy because we have a, a very high turnover of fashion trends and the industry, the SMEs, are adapting to this uh, very rapidly. Our large amount of jobs and uh, the number of businesses uh, require a 
governance, governance uh, in order to, to, to develop well. Because uh, also policy making is uh, now different than it was uh, some 10, 20 years ago. We are not, sectors are not, not any longer protected, uh, helped, uh, supported, and all this, what uh, you may think. No, it is a sector that has been um, left to its own destiny, and uh, the social partners have taken up the, uh, the challenge to uh, develop its own governance structures. And uh, we started in the 90s, having, of course, after a number of um, informal uh, social dialogue activities, we have set up the social sectoral dialogue. Uh, the textile sector, of course, uh, was before us, uh, but we very quickly followed and uh, we have a very positive and uh, uh, good social sectoral dialogue. In uh, the turn of the millennium, we, we both of the sectors set up also, picked up on the need to develop more intensively research and the relationship between research, technological innovation, and uh, um, um, the, how this has an impact on training the skills that the people that enter into the sector need to have and therefore made an automat automatism between the need of technological innovation to the world of education and training so that we do have the people that are skilled for undertaking the jobs of the future. 2010 we set up the first uh, European Sector Skills Council. It is operating, it is running, although we are still waiting for the contract of the second year of the activities, um, we are continuing to work without any public support in order not to let it fall down. Uh, and uh, um, we are very optimist, optimistic that this is going to be a fundamental a key, store, key cornerstone of uh, our sector's uh, uh, skills and uh, educational governance. 2012, we started with ESCO as the first industrial sector to be developed uh, under ESCO. And uh, 2014, there is uh, at the doorstep uh, the development of EU sector skills alliances, which we are very keen to undertake as well. So that's uh, um, how we are organized. The um, Textan Reference Group, as we want to be called in our, in our acronym, uh, covers, of course, the two sectors. It is a group that is composed by 13 experts uh, developing the common taxonomy. And I must emphasize that uh, I, am very, uh, I have a very easy task because uh, the experts that we have are excellent experts. They do know very well what they are doing here, and they are committed and uh, as in all the other reference groups, volunteers, they are not paid for what they are doing. So it is, uh, I would like all of you <laughs> afterwards to, to make a big applause to all the experts because they are, they are the real, the real uh, important people in this, uh, in this exercise. Um, on uh, what we are going to do, I think the three points are very clear and do not need any further explanation. Here you have uh, the... Um, again the, the membership of our, of our group. Um, it is a, uh, we are divided in two big areas. The green is the, the, the tanning sector or the tan part of the, of the sector which is tanning, um, footwear and uh, leather goods and related activities. The blue part of, uh, of the table represents uh, the textile clothing uh, sector. The white, uh, peop the white part downstairs is those people that have surrendered to the task and that, are, uh, that have gone uh, because uh, either they have left the sector or they have uh, decided that they cannot spend all that time and all that effort without being remunerated. And therefore, we had to uh, replace uh, uh, them as appropriate and as possible because it depends also on the technical secretariat whether this is possible. 
Our work plan is uh, to follow exactly the work plan of uh, um, uh, ESCO, that, of the guidelines that have been presented by Catherine, and I think that that is clear. We have had six meetings so far. The next meeting is scheduled for November, and uh, we are quite far in our, in our activities. Uh, um, I was asked to, to, to give some indication about what is the work in progress in Textan. Um, I'd like to show um, something on the non-covered occupations that also Eric has been uh, indicating to a certain extent on sectoral breakdowns by level of processes, uh, the prototypes, of which we have two plus one actually because in our textile guys are very, very um, active and very positive and uh, they have decided not only to make a prototype for the shirt manufacturing but also on the supply of the fabric that serves to the shirt manufacturing so in, in, in reality we do have uh, three prototypes uh, um, that are going to be developed. The matrix, uh, matrix which is the um, matching between uh, occupations and their related uh, skills and competences and uh, the amount, the, of course, the source of documents that have been uh, set up in Synapse. On the non-covered occupations, I, I show you here something that uh, you probably have seen already because uh, uh, it is uh, a document that is uh, uploaded in Synapse as a, as a general document, but it was developed by the Textan group. Uh, you see the text and document, which is a, a document where we identify how to deal with non-covered occupations. That means when we see an occupation that is not in our specific Nazi sector, but that is important for us because a very important part of uh, their task or the skills that they need are important for the value that uh, our, the, the occupation in our sector does, then um, we need to, to find a solution. And so we, we I, I identified what are the options, actually. You have uh, three options, basically, either to develop this occupational profile together between the two parties that you consult, or that uh, um, you simply, um, uh, that you are consulted, or that you're simply uh, informed about what, uh, what is happening in the other in the other group. Well, uh, ESCO found that it was a very valid document and adopted it as a, a template for the rest of uh, the groups. Working process, uh, uh, very similar to Eric. Uh, this is uh, the sectoral breakdown in the leather sector. This is uh, another way of presenting it uh, for the textile and clothing sector. Um, this is uh, uh, the same thing for the footwear sector, uh, and here you can see how uh, you can identify then at the end of the, of the line the occupations with their related skills and competences. Um, maybe that is something that you don't see very well, I hope. Here you have two, two colors. Those are skills that are uh, specific to the sector and others that are the, the other color. Uh, represent the skills that are uh, cross-sectoral uh, skills that uh, also are necessary. Um, on the matrix, uh, that is uh, the matrix, also a document that has been produced by, by uh, Textan, by uh, Professor Mario de Araujo. Um, he, here we identify all the occupations and their relate, the modules uh, that uh, of skills and competences that correspond to each of the uh, the the, um, uh, the that that needs to be put together in order to create uh, the an occupation. Of course, what we need to do is to develop this this table fully. I see that I need to uh, speed up. This is my last slide, and I would like to to give you my view of, of what it needs uh, uh, for developing positively um, uh, uh, the, the output uh, for a sectoral output of, uh, in a reference group. So first of all, of you, what you need is 
to have the social partners that work together very closely. That is fundamental. If you don't have that, you can come up with a, with a sectoral breakdown, you can come up with occupations, but uh, you won't have uh, them uh, identified by the social partners and you won't have um, a, a, a shared understanding about what the sector is. You need faith. Uh, Martin uh, um, uh, said it yesterday. He studied uh, uh, theology. Um, believers know that fa having faith is, some, is not a passive attitude, uh, that it is something if you believe, if you are a believer, if you have faith, this uh, makes you act proactively and therefore implement to see realized, see in reality what you, what, in what you believe. And that is also what you need for ESCO. Um, and you need for ESCO particularly the interest to take advantage because you don't need ESCO, you don't need the public service, the public authorities to develop that if you have a governance in the social partners. But what is important is that you have interest in taking advantage of the structured support that the EU is giving you and we are very happy with the, with the support that uh, the Commission is giving us through the technical secretariat, through the people, the competent people that are put at our disposal for developing our work. And of course, I said it, you need commitment to the task by the experts that are volunteering. I repeat, these are volunteers and these deserve all the merit of the exercise. And at the end, of course, what you need in order to succeed with ESCO is public and sector awareness. Well, sector awareness, that's something that we can do to a certain extent because also it costs money. But what is more important is that ESCO goes live, but not only live in a section, in, a, in, a, in an area, in, a, in an audience that is already understanding what it means. It needs to go public to the wide public, to the general public, in order to be taken up by the, by the people. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Gustavo, thank you. I was just reflecting while you were speaking that actually my, my shoes are from Switzerland, my socks are Italian, the jacket and trousers are German, the, the shirt is British, and the tie is, of course, French. So, <laughs> there we go. Um, we have a moment for some questions before the other groups join us again in the plenary. Uh, are there any questions on this very important sector? And again, congratulations on all the volunteering that goes on. It's quite remarkable. So, and to the experts there as well. So thank you very much for that. Any quick questions or points of clarification, maybe? Please, sir. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, John Brower from the Brewers of Europe and the uh, Sectoral Reference Group on Food, Beverage and uh, Tobacco. Um, of all the other groups that are represented here today, I think this is the one that is closest to uh, what we are concerned with in terms of the food and beverage manufacturing sectors. So um, I think uh, the progress that you have made is, is, is remarkable, it's good. Um, <clears throat> my question would be, would we um, be able to have a sort of cross-checking on the templates that you have so ably filled in for the time being and just to see, you know, as a, as a sort of um, check for understanding where we are at this particular point in time. Very good. I don't know if you would like to answer that and then maybe we can go to Katrine quickly. Gustavo, would you like to have a... Are you happy to share your templates? Of, of course, of course, we, are. We, we do that. We actually, you can find the templates and all the, the work that we're developing through Synapse because that's a, a very useful tool that, thanks to Eric, because he has said we need something that uh, allows us to exchange the information in a very uh, rapid and technological manner. And so uh, Eric uh, achieved this uh, and we achieved to put there all our templates so that you can take advantage of, uh, of what we're doing, of course. Do you know where to locate that? On the Synapse. Yeah, on the Synapse, yeah. Very good. Catherine, do you want to say quickly on that? It's on the community of textile. And the templates are on the community of textile and leather, which you cannot access, but we will make sure that are, yeah, it's only a, available for your reference group. But if you publish them in the common um, community, there is one ESCO community, everyone can find it. Well, yeah, well on any, in any case, uh, uh, the, since they have taken up uh, 
uh, for the um, general documentations, the, for instance, the template for non-covered occupations, but also the matrix to a certain extent you, 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 have, uh, you can access. But if you want to have specific documents, don't hesitate, you can contact me at any time. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting and the first real deep insight in some results of the reference groups live for me. I was very um, astonished how far you got with, uh, your, with your work. And I wondered since we discussed yesterday that we only have a loose uh, relation of the qualification pillar with the skills and the occupation pillar, whether or not the sector groups could help to uh, find a closer interaction also regarding qualifications because I saw in your presentation that via the sector dialogue you are also working on joint curricula, meaning that you also try to cover the third pillar. And my question would be, what is your experience? Could you imagine that you transfer your results from skills and occupation um, developments to the uh, education side and are the education responsible ministries involved? Now, as you can see, people are trying to move back in, so very brief answer. Very brief, very brief, and uh, thank you very much for this question. That is very opportune. Uh, we want to develop that because we are sectors that have very limited capacity at European level. We need to count also on the support from, from, from the bottom of our sector. But uh, um, we, we have, within the European Sector Skills Council, we have a contact list of about 800 contacts that involve all type of stakeholders in education, training, public authorities, um, sectoral uh, organizations that are there, test institutes, research centers, all about 800 at European, European wide uh, organizations. And uh, um, with them and uh, with uh, the guidance of uh, uh, the, our, our board, what we want to do is uh, to set it, uh, develop this. Uh, link in this joint curricula that, that are necessary for the development of the sector within the framework of the skills alliances that are going to be launched uh, as of 2014. What we need is therefore public support in order to develop what we need and what we, what we want. Thank you. Gustavo, thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, big hand of applause. Thank you.